Coming up, it's war as TV networks pull out their big guns a week before official ratings begin. Plus, the federal government to introduce content quotas for streaming services. I think the panel might disagree on this one. And Andy Lee will be here with exclusive information about his Channel 9 show, The 100. Welcome to the podcast where people in the industry get their news. This is TV Black Box in 2023. This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. Hello and welcome. I am Rob McKnight, and I'm genuinely excited to be back with the TV Black Box podcast for another year. Joining me is the viewers advocate, Steve Mulk. Hello, Mulky. Hello, Rob. And I'd like to kick off. Uh, firstly, hello. It's great to see you. Happy New Year. Um, I'd like to kick off by acknowledging that I'm talking to you loud and large from the land of the dark and jungle. Uh, TV presenter David Robinson is here. Hello, Robbo. Bless you for calling me that still. <laughs> uh, great to be here. <laughs> 2023 is the year of TV. See how I rhymed it, that? Ooh, mm. Interesting. And TV Black Box contributor Abby Mickelson is here. Hello, Abby. Hello. Thank you, Rob. Happy to be back. And I am coming to you tonight from Gadigal Land. Yes, and it's great that we are, we've got half the project team on oh, here tonight. God. Wow. <laughs> Can I be Sarah Harris? Can I have Sarah Harris's paycheck? Yeah. You've got the same facial hair as she does. I know. Uh, well, hey. let, let me tell you the conversations that have gone on in our Slack channel about that. But anyway. Get used to it. Um, I have to tell you, we are dropping the On This Day segment, but not before we mark this one because it came up in my Twitter feed from Sydney City TV mm-hmm. and it said, On This Day in 2006, Channel 9... Win and NBN dropped the dots from their logo in what would be yes. fair to say became the biggest branding blunders in Australian TV history. I would agree with that. It was a shocker when Nine lost its balls. It, it truly was. I was working up on TVQ, uh, sorry, Matt Cutha at TVQ, mm. and it was so weird after all the years that I would go up and down there look, looking at the TV stations because that's what I liked to do when I was a kid, uh, and to see it lose the the dots was just weird stupid ridiculous and i i can't there, there was a ceo uh, bloody hell i can't remember his name what's his name um uh, mcguire eddie that's right i was eddie gonna McGuire say wasn't was it during eddie's reign that that <laughs> yeah, decision was absolutely. made absolutely <laughs> and that reign though was pretty bloody short let's just mm. say <laughs> someone reigned on his and parade nine- Nine found its balls again and lived happily ever after. And Robbo, can I just say, over the summer break, great to see you on weekend today. Yes, yes hooray. Really, really fabulous stuff and, and doing a great job. Yeah, well, thank you for saying that. It was so good to be back. It, it was this weird thing where, you know, I wasn't nervous, but I was aware of it. And then when I arrived, you know, the lights were on and the wonderful cameraman who I worked with, he gave me the mic and it was like, oh, I'm getting goosebumps, so forgive me. But um, awesome. it was this thing of like he gave it to me and I was like, I know what I'm doing here. Mm. It's been a while, oh, you but were I know great. what I'm doing. Yeah, you and, did and great it job. really good. Um, you know, the other, the other reporters probably – they weren't ready for a bit of Robo humour or Robo. Kind of <laughs> no one ever um, is. No, no they played up to it. It was yeah, all no, right. No, they, they were great. Um, but it was it was wonderful to be back, and and it, oh, such a very grateful, very but very. But Malk and Abby, you let the team down because I was on that same edition of T Weekend today, <laughs> mm. and it was a TV black box takeover, <laughs> yeah, and I did wonder where you two were. Yeah, the check didn't clear. Rob. I'm available anytime. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Robbo is available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, and Everything. TV reporting gigs. Yeah, and also um, this Saturday, be watching Weekend Today. All right. Oh, you're back. Ooh, a little teaser. Oh, sorry, I forgot we went on TV. I just winked. So uh, <laughs> winked for a podcast. Here we go. He Wink. doesn't do radio. He just does TV. <laughs> <Nudge>. um, <laughs> Hey, guys, before we get to the the stories of the week, I want to talk about summer because a lot happened over summer while we were away. Uh, There were some big stories. Seven and Fox Sports nabbed the cricket rights. Nine got the Olympics. Ten boycotted Australia Day. And the Bachelors took a pummeling in the ratings. What were the stories that, what was the story that stood out for you and why, Mulk? You'd have to say that the nine nabbing the Olympics is pretty huge money and they haven't made Mm. a big deal out of it yet. I'm looking to see when that's going to play through the critical 
the critical thing about this deal for nine is that they pick up not just the next two Olympics, but the Brisbane Olympics. So they'll be the, yeah, that that's it, Robbo, the home broadcaster for the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games. Uh, and that will be massive because I think if I get it right, it's, isn't it Paris and not London, but some two places that are not going to be nothing else matters until Brisbane. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Gonna, it's 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 building on it, right? So that was a huge yeah. get for nine and a huge story that we have barely scraped the surface of. Um, for me, there there were there was a bit, but the other big one for me was ten making that statement and boycotting the Australia Day with that extraordinary email that was sent out. I copped a bit of heat, to be honest, for my reply. Can't to imagine it because why right? I said. <laughs> Well, I said that um, I just find it, I'm paraphrasing myself, but mm. I just found it ironic that a, a company owned by Americans are uh, making proclamations about what Australia Day should be. I got called xenophobic for that because it was that uh, attitude of you grew here, we flew here. Uh, you, you flew here, we grew here. And I've really been thinking about that. And the reason why I think that is important when you're running a television company is because there are cultural things that you don't understand if you didn't grow up, whether it be the, and this is stuff they probably do know, but the impact of Sunny Boys, how much you could get for 20 cents of lollies, um, just things that happened in television during that time, like what Graham Kennedy meant to us, mm -hmm. the midday show, these things that people who came here at the age of 16 or whatever might have some concept of, but there are things we grew up with that are cultural references that I think that if you fly in and you have are running a company, you don't understand. And so I found it off-putting that basically a foreign entity was telling Australia how to celebrate or not celebrate Australia Day. First of all, are you talking about cultural references? You, you said xenophobic before. I'm going to uh, kind of channel 60 Minutes uh, 1996 with Pauline Hanson. Uh, this is where it happened. Uh, Tracy, who was a reporter yes. there, said, please explain. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I did find that one of the big stories. And interestingly, uh, you guys know that I work at 4BC, so I do hear a lot of listener feedback. And I can tell you that that upset viewers and listeners. They... There are some people who have written and, and spoken into 4BC saying they won't ever watch Channel 10 again. It didn't sit well with mainstream Australia. They probably weren't watching Channel 10 to start with, Rob. Yeah, Sorry, and that's Abby. a little example of what you like to call cancel culture there, Rob. People saying, I'm not, not going to watch Channel 10 anymore. No, no, people are choosing with their feet. Yeah, that's or fine. Or their eyeballs. But it's... Yes, a very conservative audience didn't like it. A lot of people did like it. Mm. It did actually influence... A lot of other organisations as well, where I work, we chose to follow suit from Channel 10 doing that. And so, yeah, that was probably my big news story over the summer break as well, but I think for different reasons to you. Yeah, and, and look, everything you're saying is right. I, I get that it influenced your work and, and appealed to the, to the hard left on Twitter, but they're not watching television and they're not viewers. And but some things, it, are big, some things are more important than viewers. Not for a commercial network. Well, I think just in society as a general, as a whole. Well, here's the problem. Channel 10's ratings have been down. The project mm -hmm. isn't working. Um, the Bachelors was a flop. And is I'm calling it now, The Bachelors is the flop of 2023. Oh, wow. Oh, we haven't yeah, even on. started it. No, no, no. no. Can I <laughs> yeah. just say, though, no, no, we're talking about work and everything, which I think is great that 10 put together uh, uh, the first series of The Gay Bachelors because every single one of those <laughs> men, I'm telling you right now, oh, all right. Wow. they are homosexuals. No doubt about it. Keep um, that in. That's funny. I, I did think that. <laughs> I'm loving I the live edit from, the from, from Robo. Just keep that in. That's funny. Um, I, I did think that when I first saw the picture for The Bachelors. And in fairness to 10, they knew they had a flop on their hands. Mm. That's why they moved it from being in ratings last year and they've... To the tried... relative safety of summer. Yeah, the relative safety and it's still uh, bombed. So, look, the only way is up for 10, but there's a lot to happen with the project. I don't think the project's going to make it either. I reckon it's in real trouble. Mm. I reckon we'll see a uh, neighbours style uh, phoenix rising from the ashes with the project. All right, I'll bet my house against yours. 
Sure. <laughs> Bloody boomer. He's got a house. Brick. Yeah, I know. Show off. Look at us renters fighting the guy with all of the land. <laughs> all right, let's get into it because as we record this podcast on Monday night, three powerhouse brands are going head to head. On seven, Australian Idol is making its highly anticipated return. Over on Channel 9, Married at First Sight is back after dominating the ratings last year. And on 10, the eighth season of Australian Survivor is premiering. Abby, what have you been looking forward to the most? Uh, oh, probably out of the three, Survivor, but it is. I'm actually really <laughs> the one excited. That's not going to rate. Oh, yeah, but it's fun, okay? No, I am. Um, you love a lost cause. Oh, wow. Stop. That's so brutal, right? No, no, no. Far but out. I was going to say, of like, if you got me to pick three shows in 2023 that I cared about watching the most, it would be these three. So it is a little tricky that they're all on at the same time. Oh, brutal. I, it is brutal, Abby. Yeah, I will be having some late nights because. I don't want any spoilers, so I'll be watching them back to back pretty much because I, yeah, yeah the, these are the three that I care about the most this entire year. So, just by the way, that's five and a half hours of commercial television tonight. Yes, yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous how long these shows go on yeah. for, and they're wondering why people won't make the commitment. I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Maths. That's it. Australian Idol. Maths. We've seen too much of it. We're we're, we're still fatigued from. Um, Australia's Got Talent, Britain, Britain's Got Talent. Uh, your social <laughs> media voice. feeds fill um, with clips of all of those shows. And exactly right, uh, mm. Mog, The Voice as well. Um, it, it just won't work. When it was first announced a couple of years ago, everyone was very excited about it because it was a, a, you know, a legacy brand. It did great things back in the day. But when you think about it, Survivor won't rate because it hasn't rated. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, Australian Idol is just too close to everything we've seen lately. Mm. Uh, it'll be maths mm. once again because maths still holds that kind of magic of what the hell am I going to get? The other two shows, we know what we're going to get. We know already. Yep. So we don't know the act- uh, actors. <laughs> Freudian <laughs> is there. We don't know the characters. However, it, it, it just, it's fatigue. Maths is still new because whether we like to admit it or not, there is so much trash in Australia that would get <laughs> married on a TV show without meeting anyone just to see if they yep. can put out a lip gloss for about half an hour after the show yep. goes off air. It's maths all the way. Nothing else will rate. I'll tell you right now. You heard it here first. You are right. Maths, maths will be number one. Mm. I think Australian Idol, here's my prediction. Maths will do about 900,000. Uh, Australian Idol do about 600. And for the first Survivor episode. will be 250, 300. Mm. Mulk. They've done a really good job with Australian Idol. It's it's true to the original series, but it's a nice update. I found the judges compelling. Mm. Harry Connick Jr. is the dark horse. He's really, really tough. If he loves you, it's all it's all fairy floss. But if he doesn't like you, oh, he's harsh. Like he will say, I, "Why did you come here?" Yeah, as in, just, you're wasting my time. I just want to go on record and note that Rob said dark horse and not blackface horse because that would be <laughs> that's, disrespectful. That's a joke I was trying to make. <laughs> Uh, well, to well, Harry Connick yeah. Jr.'s culture. Um, hey, hey, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, look it up, Another kids. It's on the internet. Reference there. Um, <laughs> we're in a really interesting position, and and all three of you, Rob Abbey and, and Rob, have brought up some really great points about all of this. I've seen the first week of all three reality shows, so I've watched the first three Idols, the first three Survivors, and the first four Maths. Technically, I've actually watched five um, of Maths. And, and I'm absolutely going to agree with you that maths will blitz them all. Mm. I'll be surprised if it drops under a million, frankly. That hook um, at the very beginning of the show the was first amazing. first eight <laughs> seconds of maths yeah. will suck you in and you yeah. will not leave. 100%. Um, and, and, yes, maths is trash television, but jeepers creepers, we know what it is on the box. Brilliant. We know what we're going in for. And the best part is you get surprised by people that actually do intentionally show and grow feeling for each other. That's the that's the nice little gooey centre in the middle of the, the crappy nut, you know, that can sometimes be maths. So it's going to do massive business for nine. I think that seven um, have p- produced very well to overproduced Australian Idol. And Did you think it was overproduced? Yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Um, like, let's have the... the, the the judges walk into the venue and there is a single file line on either side of them like it's a crowd oh, welcoming them into that. The, yeah, but, mate, that's not sizzle. Like, pack them all on one side and film it so that it looks like they're in a, a front of a crowd at least three or four deep. You know, it's yep. not 
that, that, yeah, I, I, I agree. No, with no, that. Malky, I agree with you on this. But, but however, it's it's form for the Seven Network. They have overproduced. Yeah, we've every talked about kind this of shiny floor show. I, I didn't find it happened. overproduced. No, I, I, they, I, I didn't. I think they've done a great job. They've stayed true to the Idol format. There is some difficulty though, and that is that we don't meet the hosts tonight until minute twenty-five. I didn't see that as an issue. Oh, mate, they're the ones that are the hosts. Like, fair enough, Ricky Lee, maybe we can get away with just dropping her in there because she's an idle, you know, alum. No one cares about Scott Tweedy. No one. The hosts, the hosts aren't important really until the live shows. And the simple fact is that it, this episode is about the judges and getting to know them, seeing your cringeworthy moments and your standout performers. I agree, except that they wedge the hosts in and expect us to start caring about them at 25 minutes. That's the problem. Yeah, I, right. You know? I think the episode could have lived without them tonight, to be honest. Oh, I, I think they could have lived without them until we got down to the top 50 and they welcomed them into the Sydney studio, say, hi, here we go, off oh, we go. But there are some nice moments with the hosts in the upcoming episodes. Like Why was there no nice moments before in the first 25 minutes, though? Because I think I think it would have been too much when you're trying to get across the hosts and everything I will like tell that. you, in the first 25 minutes, there are two auditions. The songs mm. are less than 90 seconds long. Lame. Two good auditions. TV, though. It was oh, good look, telly. Some of it is and some of it's but not. But that's, that's what I struggle with with The Voice is, yeah, the mm. pacing of it is nuts. Do we know how long it is until the live shows? Because I think that's where it will be different from all the other it'll be The four Voice, weeks. Britain's Got Talent, all that. Four weeks. And, well, considering they've got to get all the cattle call auditions done, mm. the, the top 50 cut down to 24, cut down to 12. Yeah, wow. So we've got a long time before we start seeing what I would guess is going to be Sunday night auditions, uh, uh, you know, elimination mm. sing-offs live up against the MAFs dinner parties and, and you know, yeah. not the dinner parties, the... Um, Commitment ceremonies. Who marries who. Commitment yeah. ceremonies, thank you. Um, and just if I can quickly dive into Survivor, this is the best season of Australian Survivor Yay. yet. It is absolutely ball-tearing. I've got to say, 10 and the production company have continued to do a great job with survivor mm. the, oh. the fact is it's just not getting the audience and up against maths and idol i don't think it's going to do the business give me your quick predictions milk ratings wise yeah I, I i'll be surprised if it's under a mil tonight for um maths I, I agree somewhere between five six hundred for oz idol and it will taper hard people will lose interest mm. um and I think, unfortunately, there's an element of the 10 factor, an element of just too much competition. Yeah. Tonight, Survivor will be lucky to probably just crack 300. Mm. But the big show we all have to look out for is on Thursday at 7.30. Oh, yeah. Taskmaster Australia. I only late last year discovered Taskmaster, fell in love with it, binge, 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 binge. I've seen the first episode of Taskmaster Australia and I reckon they've done a fabulous job. Yep. They have remained true to the British version, given it its own unique Aussie flavour. Tom Gleeson is fantastic. I love it. I, I think I, I'm in for the whole series. I can't wait to see more episodes. Hard agree. I've seen the first episode of Taskmaster as well, and I love that Gleason gets to punch down. That's his whole yep. comedic shtick and does great. Tom Cashman is great as his offsider, who's just there being buoyant and hopeful and happy. I don't know him, but he's very good. He's very good. Um, check out his TikTok stuff. It's pretty pretty hilarious. Uh, and the, the cast of people doing the tasks, Julia Morris, Luke McGregor, Jimmy Rees, um, Nina Ayama, and Daniel Walker, are so individually and uniquely entertaining. You don't mm. have to like either of them, any of them individually. The way that they perform and commit themselves to the tasks is stellar. I think it will only get better as the season progresses. It has a very tough launch this Thursday night because it's up against against MAFs and if people care about the BBL semi final. is MAFs still going on Thursday? It is this yeah. week because it's four nights a week and it started on Monday. Well, the great thing for Taskmaster is that you can jump in any time. Oh, it's that almost kind of anywhere. format. I, I I think it's a real shame for Taskmaster that that's going to happen this week. I don't, To be honest, I'd delay it a week. I, I uh, would delay it a week to give it a chance. I reckon this is the weakest of the episodes. So it's not bad to, you know, if you have to sacrifice one, get the first episode out of the way. Because the first challenge in this episode of Taskmaster is not their best. Yeah, the first one just in at, on the well, stage. Well, that's up to them. They can put any task they want as their opening task. They obviously liked it, and I liked it. I that's what Taskmaster is. Some of them. It was just the most tasks. clunky of all of the tasks that they did. That was the most clunky. 
So I, I also like the tone that was set off the back of that task. But anyway, mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing. I, if you recommend- want my full opinions, get the TV binge box podcast that I've rejuvenated and reinvigorated. This week Ooh. I review Australian Idol, Maths. Um, Australian Survivor and Taskmaster, they are all available on the TV Black Box website or subscribe, get TV Binge Box. Wait, Mocky, are you allowed uh, more than two on that podcast, are you? <laughs> I, I run the show, mate. Who allowed I, that? I can have as <laughs> mi- I, I get to talk about a show for longer than two minutes, mate. <laughs> we do need to move on because there's a lot to get through because streaming services are set to have new content quotas implemented as part of a raft of sweeping changes by the federal government. Reports in the News Corp press over the weekend suggest the figure would be 20% of all revenue derived in Australia, but Arts Minister Tony Burke says that figure will be negotiated. Here's what he told 7 News about the introduction of content quotas for streaming services. The days of there being no guarantee of Australian content on streaming services have to come to an end. And they come to an end on the 1st of July next year. We're going to be spending the first half of this year locking down the consultation to work out exactly how the quotas will work, exactly how they'll apply and what sub-quotas they'll be. And then we'll spend the second half of the year with legislation in the Parliament. And once we get halfway through next year, streaming quotas will be a reality in Australia. This announcement was part of the National Cultural Policy, which was announced on Monday. Robbo, it's estimated this could generate around 10,000 jobs. Surely that's a good thing for the industry. Absolutely, 100%, no doubt about it. Obviously, the industry in Australia and everywhere, TV, radio, uh, is is dying and has been dying for a long time. Uh, the, the biggest problem, though, is uh, obviously COVID, and we're still talking about this. So uh, the MEAA, which is the Union for Journalists and Actors and things like that, they said in 2020 that they lost more than 1,000 jobs in less than 12 months. Um, there was also EY polled entertainment companies, and we're talking about uh, live action, like concerts and things like that, they lost over 100,000 jobs in that time. So obviously, I know we're talking about uh, COVID from 2020. Uh, we're now 2023, only the beginning. So we're still really feeling that. This is a $5 billion industry uh, in Australia and employs over 30,000 people in direct and indirect ways. And we're talking about streaming. We're talking about network television. We're talking about radio. Yep. We're talking about all of these things. This is really important. We've talked about this uh, topic a lot on this program Uh, and I've always been a big believer of uh, there needing to be quotas. If you're making money here, if you're getting uh, money from Australians, then we need to see Australian stories. So I think this is actually uh, really great. So this is all part of obviously the uh, Albanese government's uh, new national cultural policy, which is about revive. And this is the thing. If if you want to have this kind of wonderful input into the way that we live and breathe and see our stories it's, it's got to be a labor government conservatives are friggin awful please don't get political like that no seriously i don't want to do things where we're choosing which side of politics we're coming down no no, no, no. hold on hold on hold on i, I will fight you on this one because i knew you'd do that the whole point of this though is because it is a political movement and that is that the labor government has said we are going to invest For the past 10 years, Liberal National did not invest in the arts. If you look it up, they took money away Mm. from the arts and put it into everything else. So you can't choose this story, Rob, and then go, well, we can't make it political. The only reason we're talking about it now is because we had a change of government. If the Liberal and National won in May last year, we would not be having this conversation because this would not have happened. Well, there has been a push for content quotas going forward from even at the previous government. There were applications uh, but they were never going to do it. The, the screen politics of it is relevant. To have content quotas. Of course it's but relevant, I'll take Rob. that as a comment. My point is this is about whether it's good policy, not which side of politics is delivering it. Mulk, I seem to have, uh, I think I saw something where you're not quite in agreement with this one. I, I, I just don't want us to get ahead of ourselves. This is a proposal that the government will be bringing after consultation with the industry it, hoping to have it legislated by the end of 23 to enact by the mid-24. That's their plan. But we know what the industry is going to say. They're going to say, if you regulate us, we'll do the bare minimum, whereas if you don't regulate us, we'll probably do more. Well, I mean, and, bullshit, and, and, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> but I think it opens up some interesting conversations. First of all, by them, and, and look, uh, you know, News Corp were very quick to list all of the overseas streamers that would be affected by this, and then omit binge. Because it would also be affected by this. Yeah, so that's what I thought. It would have to be. Like, that's that's part mm. of the process. The, the, the secondary issue is that it's based on revenue. 
And what is one thing that our international, every company is good at doing is minimizing their revenue. So as soon as we tell them that 20% of their revenue has to go into making product in Australia, if they really don't like it, what's their revenue sink? I've seen people go, oh, well, the prices will go up on my Disney Plus subscription. No, they won't. If they go up, that will mean more revenue that they then have to pour more money back into making programming. You've missed the logic of this. It's yeah. interesting you say that because I think Netflix had a uh, official revenue after tax of thirty five million. It was thirty five million, I think. Twenty percent of that's not heaps. No, but according to the AFR in twenty twenty one, it's two episodes um, of maths. It, I want to read you this. The company continues to use a corporate structure, allowing a Netherlands based subsidiary to recognise Australian revenue estimated to be between $700 million and $1.4 billion. Now, they're only talking about Australian revenue as well. I just want to point out the legislation can't yes, talk to re- but that's you know, revenue Australian for revenue everyone that's else. being hit in the Netherlands. Mate, if, Amer- if Netflix are making $1.1 billion out of Australia just through subscriptions, God bless them. Um, I want to get a piece of that. So the, the how that function is going to work and the Im- impact on the local streamers like Stan and Minge, I, w- I also want to just give some quick credit to the fact that Netflix and Disney Plus and Stan and particularly Stand and Binge, um, all, all of them are starting to make Australian content now without this legislation in place. So that's a positive, hearing Australian stories. And I want to say, more jobs in the industry in Australia, phenomenal. We want that, please, please, please. What this highlights is just how good the lobbyists for the commercial free-to-air networks are because we are still working under relaxed COVID content conditions for them so they're not having to make anywhere near... like. Albanese tweeted tonight, the Australian, you know, commercial broadcasters have to meet content. Bullshit. They are making they are making way less Australian content now. No children's content. Hang on, they're still making 55% of content between 6 and midnight needs no, to be not. Australian. No, they're not. Not a chance. They relaxed it for COVID. They lobbied to make sure that that didn't get raced back. It has not raced back. So they're not making 55%. So what's 55%. the content quota now, if you're correcting me? Uh, I do not have that number to hand. I just know that the content quota relaxation... I'm not arguing that drama got pulled back, that kids' TV got pulled back. Cut. Kids' TV got cut. But I Googled that this afternoon, and it said that the content quota for Australian television networks is 55% between 6 p.m. and midnight. It was. That was the legislated quota. It has not gone back to that yet. Um, the, the challenge is, I am, as I said, I'm pro our industry. I want to see us make stuff. I want to tell our stories. We are the taxpayer propping up Australian free-to-air commercial television. They're not paying license fees. They're not having to meet their quota expectations. There are subsidies available that they're getting, and good on them. Merry Christmas and have a great day. Why do we still have an anti-siphoning list? Why are we still allowing them to prop up and prioritise a failed business model that, and I, I love them, lots of people that we know work there, we want to see them keep working there, but why is the government allowing them to continue to rot the system and yep. then force overseas content makers to have, admittedly, quotas where they don't have quotas, so yeah, it would be good to have you know stories told. Why are we allowing this to take place? Like, just because it seems like a vote winner, look, I am... Absolutely pro labor in the you know the broadest sense. I want to see them bring in some good stuff, but let's have a better think about this legislation and not give the commercial free to air broadcasters a free kick, which is exactly what we're giving them. I, I don't think that's true. How okay, so? Okay, they're not paying their license fee. Haven't paid them for nearly five years. Yep, they've been under a lot of pressure, and we are trying to have a thriving uh, industry, but they are set up here in Australia. They're employing Australians. They're not an overseas company that is employing people to sit overseas and put content onto a streaming service with no Australian outlets or very minimal Australian Mm. outlets. This is actually an industry that is built, bred and lives and breathes in this country. So it is putting funds back into the country. Also, whatever the content quotas are, and I'm still trying to Google, so we're going to have to revisit this next week because everything I'm seeing, even on the Australian, uh, even on the ACMA website, says 
that it is uh, 55% Australian content between, and I said 6 p.m., it's 6 yep. a.m. at midnight on primary channels. So that's why your sunrises and your todays get caught up. And in your news. And news. Um, so someone in the programming at one of the networks, please reach out to me and let me know what is the correct where we stand right yeah, now. Yeah, and I'm happy to be corrected, Rob. I, I don't want it to sort of sound like I'm pontificating too greatly. If you will indulge me just briefly, the, the difficulty that we have in the broadest sense around this is that it the industry has changed, like not, not just like a, a few degrees, significantly. If we can make a, a, a kind of comparison, I, I agree that the Australian tele television industry was one that obviously copied and grew out of what was happening overseas, but we made it our own. We turned it into something uniquely Australian and we've all grown up on it. And that's phenomenal. So did the car industry in Australia. We don't make a vehicle in Australia anymore. It is I, just I, not... I, I don't think that equates at all. It is not cost still, profitable. We don't, we is. sell. No, it's not. That's the whole point. They manufacture them overseas no, because it's cheaper cars. to I'm do. I'm talking about the television industry, sure. which is still making a lot of money, turning over a lot of revenue. I know that 10 were in the red to the tune, I think, of 3.5 or 7 million in the most recent financial year um, sure. that has been reported. But, the but they're not a public company and subsidised by their parent who are seeing it for different reasons that, say, correct. people who are shareholders in Seven but West Media or Nine. My my point is the governments did prop up the car industries uh, for a long to help time. employ for jobs. Yep. But here, I don't understand why people are protecting overseas conglomerates to be able to make a shit ton of revenue from Australia and not put anything back in. And the I'm TV sorry to labour networks, it. Yeah, go sorry. I'm sorry. The TV networks or put back into this country through employment, through many opportunities. Netflix, Disney, um, any other streaming service from overseas, they're not putting the money back in. And I know there have been some Aussie productions, but they're not under quotas. Why should they not be subjected to quotas like the free-to-air TV networks are? No one is saying that they should be at 55%, yeah. but a 20 or 15% is not asking a lot. If, if you'll let me just labour the, the metaphor, or the, the comparison. Holden, Ford, employed literally hundreds of thousands of people, Australians, every year to make cars. The government propped them up until the very last breath and they're gone. And now when we have a look at the greatest motor race in Australia, there is no longer an Australian brand car racing around that track at Bathurst. That's fine. But what's your headline here? It, it, because you, you've gone off on a tangent about the future of Australian television and, and mm. cool, fine. But the headline here, is it that there should or shouldn't be content quotas for streamers? It, it is a symptom of a bigger issue. If we're just going to focus on that issue, and I acknowledge that's the story, I apologise for digressing. Um, if we're just going to focus on that, I'm fine that we have some conversation with them and look to legislate quotas. I think that 20% is too much. I think that 20% of revenue is going to only cause bigger issues when what we actually need to be doing is taxing multinationals rather than... if if Look, if Apple and Netflix and Microsoft and all of the companies that live overseas and do their you know double Irish twist with a half giraffe paid their share of tax, we would not be having this conversation. Yeah, look, I, I agree about the tax issue 100%. I, I think the way companies can make money out of Australians and not pay proper tax is absolutely outrageous. Join a union, but kids. I, well, I don't know how that fixes anything, but whatevs. Um, but I do agree with content quotas for streamers. I have a lightning quick update for those that are caring. While we are recording, um, Married at First Sight, Australian Idol and Australian Survivor are going to air. The cheeky little fetch app that allows me to see who's watching what and what's going on currently shows that Married at First Sight has a bigger audience than Australian Idol and Australian Survivor combined. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. No Obviously, there. Now, it's not Oztam, it's not a fish, yeah. but it, that's pretty amazeballs. It sounds and, about right. And is Australian Idol doing better than Survivor? By about 2%. Okay. 
So not huge. Hey, did you see this? There was a bit of a buzz on the Gold Coast over the weekend as Russell Crowe jetted into town to announce the annual Actor Awards for the Gold Coast. It'll be the first time the two awards ceremonies are held as a combined event. Previously, the awards have been in Sydney and Los Angeles. It will also be the first time the event is broadcast globally. This is what Russell Crowe had to say about the move to the Gold Coast. You know, we're just going to encourage people to come up here and I, I believe one of our main conversations is about holding it at HOTA, you know? And I said many years ago when I first heard about HOTA, I said something special is going to happen because they built that, you know? And it's like that classic Kevin Costa moment, isn't it? Build it and they'll come and here it is, you know? So if we can hold it at a place that's been built specifically to celebrate the arts at HOTA, that would just be a magnificent thing. Hoda's Hoda's a great venue. What I love about that is he can't even say that they will be at Hoda. He's just like, it'd be a great venue for them to be at. Malk, this seems to indicate that the Queensland government is letting go of the Logies. Uh, Look, what it indicates is that Tom Tate and Anastasia Palaszczuk are media tarts and they want to get their heads on television as much as they can, understandably. Um, I, I think it does indicate that, you know, there would only be a certain size bucket that they can pour into encouraging media events to happen in Queensland. And if all of a sudden the actors are coming to Queensland, the Logies are leaving. Yeah, I, I think that's what it says to me. Well, it's been a tale of two very different goodbyes up in Brisbane, with sports presenters at 9 and 7 both blowing the final whistle. Last week, Pat Welsh signed off after an incredible 47 years with a 10-minute tribute and on-air farewell. Meanwhile, TV Black Box broke the news Wally Lewis would be stepping down as sports presenter, effective immediately due to ongoing health issues. Robbo, this is a big change for Queensland viewers. This is huge, Monster. and I Monster. watched the Pat Welsh goodbye, and I promise you there were there, there was watery eyes, there were goosebumps. This is a man who has been around uh, forever. He came mm. in, like you said, in the package. Uh, he was two months shy of being in black and white. Yep. It was 1975 at BTQ. Um, what I love, though, about this is that there are still people in television, and I'm looking at you, BTQ, that still love TV. Mm. They were using the old mission theme, the old Seven News theme. <laughs> they used the the original Seven National yes. News theme. with love. Whoever, yeah, whoever put this together absolutely did, did a great it with love. Job. Pat Welsh is a brilliant talent. I was lucky enough to meet him a few times. Just a great guy, really friendly, knew his stuff could do anything. Oh, so many Olympic moments too. Sorry, Robbo. Like Pat Welsh was the voice of Commonwealth Games and Olympics, uh, uh, along with McEvaney and the rest of them. But he was, for a Queensland kid, you recognise Pat Welsh's voice. That's exactly what I was going to say. It was the thing of we knew Bruce was doing everything. But when you saw Pat Welsh... As, as you're saying, as a, a, a Brisbane person, you're like, oh, he's he's with us. He's mm. one of ours. And look where he is. And he just had that wonderful way about him. Beautiful, big, curly hair. Uh, one of the great things about the package massive uh, that I can I can tell you, massive nose. Well, that was the other thing, but I was going to leave that out. Oh, but I was sorry, trying man. to say the things that I've experienced. <laughs> sure. Obviously, a massive nose on television. Um, but also, um, there was this thing where he did a piece to camera at the Birdsville races. He was under the weather and they kept the final bit and there have been a few times in my career where i've been out in the hot bush these people give you beer and you're oh. trying to do this piece to camera <laughs> and the cameraman always just keep recording for that little bit longer mm. after you finish and it's like <laughs> um, this is a great guy this is a great talent what a massive loss for seven I-, I know people talk about this all the time in tv i hope he remains a genuine friend of the station and yep. of the network um, because he is absolutely amazing. Uh, he told me a story once when he first started, um, they would have to rush the film back up to the mountain. Yeah. So they'd do a story uh, down in the city or anywhere else. And he goes, the, yes. the, the trick was he, d- he didn't know how cameramen didn't get speed fines more or, you know, be pulled over because the it, the thing was on. You needed to get that film up to BTQ to be processed, to be developed, and then pulled on. Worst place to have a TV <laughs> station in the film days, Absolutely. up the top of a mountain, like seriously. Oh, Which is why the but ABC fantastic- didn't, but we won't talk about cancer clusters. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, but he, Pat Walsh is amazing. Obviously, Wally Lewis, amazing. What a great get for nine. Wally, obviously, yep. when he left uh, football, he first went to Channel 7. He went and, to and they Channel were able 10 to get him. first. Oh, really? Okay. For about so two minutes. Yeah, it was literally, it was really, really short. And then he went to seven, mm. which I thought, what a great get. And then nine, nine's the home of rugby league. Yeah. Nine was it made sense, genuinely right? the home of him. I, I feel um, sorry I think- for nine because of the way 
Seven got to do and plan a big tribute package, but with Wally, there's health issues. And yeah. so not being able to have him presenting again and, and go back into the studio. And I know that they were desperate to keep him part of the family. They've done a really good deal with him and he will be providing expert commentary. He'll still be appearing on Wide World of Sports, but um, what those health conditions are just stopping him from being able to uh, present is my yeah. understanding in, in sure. that way needed for a nightly bulletin. So There'll be great packages he... and pre-records and stuff, yeah. Yeah. You but know, don't so... you think, though, but, but, but for a Queensland audience, for a network like Nine to have kept the king of rugby league and, and train him and, and get him to speak, you know, all of that kind of thing, give him media training, what a bloody coup Robbo, and what a great thing for TV. To three times Wally a year. Lewis. Channel Nine only need to roll out Wally Lewis three times a year. State yep. of origin. That yep. That's it. The pinnacle and great opportunity to bring him in and connect him into that. We've seen other New South Wales captains and players, you know, take on commentary careers and stay in the game and do all those sorts of things. But nobody, nobody has held the same awe by rugby league fans even still today as Wally Lewis. All right, coming up, Andy Lee joins us with some exclusive info about The 100. And we'll find out what everyone's been watching when we head into the binge box. Well, as we discussed, it's game on in television land with the networks bringing back their biggest shows and introducing new ones. The 100 with Andy Lee is one of those returning shows and Nine will be hoping for continued growth with Andy telling me we can expect to see a lot more of Sophie Monk. Andy Lee, welcome back to TV Black Box. Love being on TV Black Box. You are a good man, and that's why we love you. Um, mate, the 100, it's back. Uh, this show is kicking goals. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised as anyone, but I'm loving it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, but maybe I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, people love watching themselves. And that's what this show's all about, it's about Australia. So whenever I've done a corporate gig, they've always say, just talk about the people in the room and they'll, they'll like it. So I guess I'm doing a show that talks about Australia. Mate, TV, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I certainly know you've had your ups and downs from your first show on Channel 7. You've then had a lot of success and The Cube didn't fire on 10. But this show, it's just, it's you, it's perfectly fit for you and it is connecting with Australians. Yeah, oh, thanks, bud. It's funny, we're actually shooting this, uh, The 100, in the same studio as Hamish and I had the failed Hamish and Eddie television show back on Channel 7. No, really? Uh, yeah, it's the exact same studio. <laughs> I think it's 20 years ago, like, so that's really scary. Um, so there's a bit of post-traumatic stress. <laughs> my girlfriend to bring in a stage, I think she calls it. She walked around with a, a smoking stick just to cleanse the, uh, <laughs> the failures of past, <laughs> past TV shows. I liked that show, by the way. Oh, that's kind of you. Um, okay, it definitely had its merits, but it certainly had its problems. Hamish and I were very aware of that. Um, but, you know, when we were 22, I think, so um, throwing a couple of kids on primetime telly was always going to be a big ask. Oh, sometimes you just got to go for it. Um, mate, Sophie Monk, she's playing a bigger role this year, I understand. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of the questions people ask me in Australia the most is when Sophie coming back on. And thankfully this year we can say a lot more regularly. Um, so she'll do over half the episodes, which is excellent. She's just fit for this show. <laughs> she, I mean, her answers, you know, she she's funny when she's not trying to be funny. Um, I, You know, I, I've often thought this about Sophie. If in about... 10 to 15 years' time, she just says, I'm the best comic comic actor of all time. And, of course, I was just being daft on the <laughs> comic release. I would believe her because the way her brain goes sometimes, <laughs> it, it seems like it can't be true. <laughs> so she's in she's in over half the episodes. Uh, who else is going to be there? Because I've been tantalisingly told there will be some amazing guests. Oh, well, I mean, returning favourites. Um, Luke McGregor, Denise Scott, Anne Edmonds, Tommy Little, uh, Soph, of course, and a guy called Hamish Blake, but I'm not so familiar with his work. Mm. He was not, not nice last time we had him on. Uh, and then some new some new people, which I'm really looking forward to, um, which you're trying to do every year. Uh, Ross Noble has never been on before. He'll be on. Um, Dave Thornton, Mel Buttle, Reese Nicholson, uh, Kate Langbrook. Um, yeah, we've got a, we've got a great. Um, guest panel this year, and Tony Martin as well, which I'm looking forward to. A lot of good names there. Uh, you are the producer of the show as well as the star. 
Um, when you're choosing who to put on, what are the factors that go into your head? Um, if they've said yes, that's definitely a plus. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, there is a chemistry thing, you know, and, and you're trying to make yeah. sure the right people go together, yeah? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, the, thankfully, the, the, we've got so many great performers. I'd, I'd love seeing um, younger talent getting opportunities, which is important, but also uh, the the uh, the stalwarts as well. It's, it's, it's great trying to balance all that. And then we want, we want the guests, the panels, to, to kind of represent, like, the Zoom is represent the cross section of Australia. We we also want to get a, diff, a lot of different and a variety of voices on the panel as well. So that's what we're trying to do. And um, but yeah, if they say yes, that's definitely the first <laughs> the first part of it. It's a long shoot, isn't it? Uh, it's it's a lot longer than the hour of television you make. Uh, is that just because of the technicalities, or because you're trying to throw in more jokes than you need? Definitely more jokes than you need, and then have the opportunity to tap down and pick the best and see what's great for balance. But um, you know, as far as shoots go, it's it, it's probably about normal for this type of show, mm. um, for a comedy panel show. Probably a bit, bit, bit on the quicker side, which is nice. I, I find that if shoots go too long, you lose the studio audience, and then it becomes sluggish, and you want to yeah. get the energy up. But uh, yeah, it's it's, a, it's a, a fascinating balance. But you know, I've been on comedy panel shows, uh, guesting and uh, where they can go three, three and a half hours into the Nick Coast before us, and we did not want to do that just because it, uh, I think it ruins everyone's fatigue, everyone. So ours sit around two and a half, and that's our magic spot. No, oh, well, that seems to work very well for you. Uh, will we have more episodes this year? Yes, I think. Well, I'm, 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 whether I'm allowed to say that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's said now, mate. You've said it now. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly how many, and that's the truth as well. I don't believe that for a minute. You know, I know that you no. know, but that's all right. You've I given know. me something. I, I actually don't, I promise you, <laughs> um, because I'm hoping for more because I'm just loving doing it. It's very rare you get to the end of a season and you're like, oh, let's do that again. Often you fall in a heap and go, oh, let's see if we want to do that again. But um, I think we'll be back at the end of the year. Oh, I know we'll be back at the end of the year, just how many, um, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, a few more than we than we were last season. When you when you tap into a show that is getting success, and especially, uh, I think nine pm or ish after the seven thirty reality show mm. is uh, fertile ground and something mm. we need. Uh, would you like to expand your horizons? Maybe do a nightly tonight show or anything like that? Oh, that's really interesting. I mean, probably not because I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> but, uh, you just need a good producer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Um, no, it's pretty awesome that I mean, I, I, what the Chiefs East did was, was fantastic. Obviously, mm. have you been paying attention? It's been being occupying the space and doing so well for 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 a long time. And I'm fans of both of those. I'm a fan of both of those shows. And to be included in that stuff, I, 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 there needs to be for me. There just needs to be more outlets for comedy mm. um, on telly and for, for comedians. Um, that we dried up for a little bit there. It's nice to see that it's cycling back and, and we're getting more opportunities. There's a new comedy show uh, about to start on Channel 7, and I know that's on another network, but Mm. it's going to be hard in this day and age, isn't it, to do that kind of parody because everyone seems ready to complain. Do you think a sketch comedy show can work in 2023? Uh, I mean, it, it, it depends on the, the type of sketch. We've seen some amazing sketch comedy in 2023. I, people, when we refer to sketch comedy, comedy, I think we're often thinking about, you know, back to fast forward kind yep. of days is what's in our brains, and and then they tried it with Let Loose Live, but I think they probably they probably pulled too much from from the past. Mm. Um, I've got I'm not across what they're doing at all with this new show, but you know, sketch comedy, comedy shows like Aunty Donna. Uh, the big old house of fun, and, and there's some really great ones in there that are, that are, that are working and have found an audience. So there's no reason why why it can't can't work, um, but certainly a, a, a harder job, I think. Yeah, well, comedy is always hard, um, and those who do it and do it successfully are uh, sort of legendary, which you are. You know, I'm a fan, mate. Uh, what's your big ambition for 2023 in the entertainment world? Oh, in the entertainment world. <laughs> I'm not a... Or are you getting married or something like that? Is there something else happening in your life? 
That's a that's a, like my big ambition is to learn how to chip when it comes to golf, but that's not so exciting to write. <laughs> I'm not sure if women's day are going to run that. On this <laughs> no, probably not. Um, um, but look, I'll say this: Beck and I we purchased a house um, last year, well, actually a year and a bit ago, and um, it's a from 1876, and it's. It hasn't been lived in for 30 years and it's got holes in the walls and grass growing through it and pigeons that have lived in it longer than most humans. So that's our big goal is to, to try and get a start on restoring that thing. Well, mate, it sounds like a special version of the block. I, I think Channel 9 would be very, very keen on that. That might make the renovation really cheap, actually, Rob. You, yeah. you give me a great suggestion. I might follow that up. <laughs> Talk to Michael Healy. I'm sure he'll be very interested. Mate, we look forward to The 100 with Andy Lee returning on February 7. Uh, good luck with it, mate. We love it. You don't need luck. You just need awareness. Have fun with it. Thanks, Rob. Really appreciate your time. Now, how's that? Nine have obviously got a lot of faith with Andy revealing that the show will be back again later in the year. That's oh, good wow. News. Season three and four in 2023. Mm. So are they renaming it the 400? <laughs> All right. It's time Cheap to head to into the binge box and find out what everyone's been watching. No group binge this week, but I do have a show I want to recommend for next week. Abby, what have you been watching? Um, I have been re-watching Grey's Anatomy, which I... Excellent. Yes. Amazing. Like, Isn't I there stopped... like 74,000 seasons Yeah, 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 but you only have yeah. to watch the first nine. So I stopped around season... <laughs> no, seriously. I stopped... <laughs> Being serious. I That's stopped amazing. around season 12. Season nine is when it started to go downhill. I stuck it out for a few seasons because I loved it so much and then I just couldn't anymore. Um, so I've just gone back to the beginning and just, again, plan on stopping after season nine. But it is so good. The first few seasons are like if you haven't watched it it's one of those shows that everyone knows about it's been around forever but there's actually a lot of people who have never taken a proper look at it i really want to watch it 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 is so good the story is so good the twists are so good everything is just so good i mean Um, mcdreamy is everything mcsteamy is better but sure oh Um, please (laughs) please (laughs) if you don't mind yes so i've been watching that which has been good and then um that's kind of been it. I've been – the H3 podcast came back last week, which I love. It's like they do four episodes a week. Each episode's like almost three hours sometimes, so it's just like content, what? content, content. Um, never run out of it, never get to give it. It's like my favourite way to get news and commentary and comedy and everything but all in TV one. not TV news. No, not TV news, never. <laughs> TV Black Box is the only place I go wow. for that. This is awkward. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, I – yeah, H3 podcast. News about always about serial killers? It. No. <laughs> well, it's funny no, you say that. It. Monsters Who oh. Murder is coming oh. back next week, Mock, so keep an eye out on that one. And News about Brisbane's only talk radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, what have you been watching? I've been watching Love, Death and Robots on Netflix. Mm, this what's that? Is, Good choice. Uh, it, it's an amazing series. It, so they're, they're short films between sometimes six minutes to about 15. Mm. I think maybe the, the longest might be 20 minutes, Mock. Um, they're completely different kind of genres they're either fully animated they're uh, hand-drawn animation they're uh, cgi animation they're live action they're a mixture of both it is storytelling at its best and it's so different it's on netflix there are now i believe they call them volumes because you know how the nerds <laughs> like to change things but um they're, they're not three seasons they're three volumes um they're fantastic and they just deal with it's it's it'll be comedy it'll be uh the end of the world it'll be all of these different kind of things that you could think of it it's a fantastic fantastic series love death and robots on your netflix okay i have been basically watching taskmaster uk i, I seriously just can't get enough um and where are you watching that rob i'm watching it on binge thank you or foxtel now uh thank it's you my Mark. pleasure my daughter is obsessed with The Last of Us on... <gasps> As well, she should be. And I'm actually... You know what? I, I've, that could actually be our binge next week, um, our group binge, I highly recommend But I do it. have another one. Yeah, please make it do that it. one because I want to watch All it. Right. Do it. We'll, we'll make it <laughs> The Last of Us. So my other binge for this week is The Cleaner on BritBox, which is Greg Davies, who is the host of Taskmaster. Yep. And yes. it is basically a crime scene cleaner 
who goes to all these different crimes, crime scenes to clean up after people have died. So he's mopping up the blood and everything. And it sounds yep. gory, but it's a comedy. It's really funny. And he meets funny. new and interesting people. It's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Mark, what have you been Good watching? Choice. And don't forget, you've got a whole podcast with TV Binge Box coming back. So we only need two quickies Woo. from you. Well, I was going to say, I've got 17 shows in eight parts. Um, <laughs> no. I, I, will say, I was going to actually make one of them The Last of Us. Um, however, I will let, let us use that as hold a group on, binge. Hold your fire. I do want to encourage the people that in the show as well as those listening that may want to play along. Before next week's episode, watch the first three. That's currently what's available now. Goodness okay. gracious me. Because episode one to episode three, daylight difference. And it is a phenomenal tale that episode three gives us in the Last of Us universe. When you say it's daylight the difference, is that like, uh, was it called the OA where the woman turned out to be, remember it went through the whole storyline and then we discovered she was a princess or something like that? Oh, probably. Uh, was that the OA, the OC? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, see, it was the it OC. It did really well that for was one season. Dawson's and the Creek. second the season OC. was crap. Dawson, Dawson was a princess the whole time <laughs> of the realm of Capeside. The, Sorry, the real anyway. for The Last of Us is that it is made, uh, at, it's a computer mm. game turned into a drama series, and the people who made the computer game are behind the scripting and plotting of the drama series. So it stays very true to the, the universe. It's lovely. Get into it. Let's talk about The Last of Us next week. Um, definitely, if you want to get my full views on it or anything else that I've talked about tonight, it's on TV Binge Box. So go and check that out on the TV Black Box website or subscribe to TV Binge Box. One of the things that I did cover for TV Binge Box was a new series that's now running on Apple TV+. Plus. It's called Shrinking. Mm. It stars Jason Segel and a little actor who's getting his first TV series, a guy by the name of Harrison Ford. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, I've seen him in a little thing before. Yeah, it's no, good they're giving newcomers a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's worn a hat occasionally. The thing that is the hook is it was created by Jason Siegel and then two guys who were responsible for Ted Lasso, which of course has been a massive hit for Apple TV Plus, including Brett Goldstein, who stars in Ted Lasso. Um, he plays Roy, um, the the footballer, the old grouchy guy. Um, they helped write and create shrinking it is very funny extremely heartfelt wonderfully insightful and it just for me reinforced how important it is to have friends who will love you no matter what you drop on them it's incredible warm television shrinking on apple tv plus go and check it out okay also the name of a short play that i wrote about when i went into a pool <laughs> once when it was cold yes. <laughs> although in your case it was actually called vanishing <laughs> um, That's volume two. I have never watched anything on Apple TV Plus or whatever. Yeah, it's we know Apple it was TV. my group binge last year, and you didn't watch. Have it. you not watched Ted Lasso? No. Have I, you not I've watched, never watched Ted Lasso? anything on Apple TV ever? Rob McKnight, you have done this podcast a disservice. Yeah, Apple no. TV has some great stuff. You're missing. Oh, out. I will have to take a look. Okay, we're going to do some plugs. So Robbo is on weekend today on Saturday. Do you know what time you're on, Robbo? No, I don't even know where it is, but I know it's Saturday the 4th. Okay. Mo, I love it. You're doing radio and things like that? Me? Yeah, I'm, I'm everywhere that you don't want me to be. Uh, and importantly, <laughs> of course, the TV Binge Box podcast is running. All right. Now, for me, you can see, you can hear me Monday, Wednesday and Friday on Afternoons with Sophie Formica doing the Entertainment Quarter. That's around 2.45. In WA, you can hear me Tuesday at 4.30 on Perth Live. And in New South Wales, Friday at 9 p.m. on 9 p.m. on Nights with John Stanley. That's 8 p.m. in Brisbane, plus other assorted things. All right, that's the plugs out of the way. Thank you very much for... Abby? This Abby's not doing you anything You can follow me on about? Instagram, Abby Tintin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah your, come on. Is your music podcast coming back, Abby? Oh, one day. Great. Another time. When good, she's motivated. Good, good chat. Uh, <laughs> all right, that brings us to the end of TV Black Box. Don't forget, for more exclusives and to find out what's going on in this crazy little industry, go to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the industry get their news, don't you know? And what a fabulous start to the year. I'm so excited to see you guys, and I can't wait for next week. See you next week. Sale of the Century Wave. Bye. Bye.